Hey, hi guys. Welcome to yet another episode on Breaking the Myths. This is Deepti, founder of Heal Clinic. And today we have with us Neelu. Uh, she's a practitioner of Siddha Yoga and uses Theta Healing as a tool in her healing sessions. She's an extremely psychic and clairvoyant person uh, who is in communicates and receives messages from the masters, from the spirit guides on the other side. So we thought that who else but her to help us explain what are the different psychic gifts that we have and how we can use it. Because many of us believe that psychic gifts are something that is bestowed upon only a select chosen ones. Uh, whereas in reality, uh, this is something that Nilu has taught me over the years, that every soul is born with heightened psychic gifts and capabilities. But somewhere along the way in our day-to-day -day life, these senses have been dimmed. So there are a lot of beings on the other side, like our spirit guides, our masters, angels, who all communicate to us. And one of the modes or channels through which they communicate is known as clair channels. So today, let's understand from Nilu what clairs mean and how can we use them in our life to communicate and get messages and better our lives. So welcome, Nilu. Hello, Deepi. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think the first question which a lot of people ask us at Heal Clinic is that when we say that we receive messages from the other side, what does that mean? So uh, we me receive messages in many different ways from many different uh, uh, places, you know. People sometimes receive from uh, physically. Like, you know, a lot of people see these triple ones, triple two, uh, you know, seven, seven, seven. So these are also messages. A lot of people see uh, feathers and coins here and there in their house. These are physical uh, like messages from uh, divine beings. But then again, it depends on the vibration of the person because uh, there, if you if a person is vibrating in a good vibration, you know then a person receives messages from higher beings. But if, it, if there is a low vibrating being, he could be receiving messages like, you know, could get uh, haunted and, you know, maybe, you know. So there's a lot of people do all these, uh, these games to uh, connect with uh, spirits on the other side. They also receive messages. But those are, could be from waywards and all that. But from where you receive messages actually purely depends on how evolved you are. So if you are vibrating at the, you know, at the level of the fourth dimension, you will re receive messages from there. And if you are even more higher, then it comes from the fifth. And uh, then it goes beyond, you know. But And some people are extremely clear and... Uh, you know, pure. So they also receive messages from the source energy. So there are lots of places where you can receive messages. You know, generally everyone has the spirit guides from whom they receive messages like always. But it is like the silent voice behind the mind, you know, which tells you what is the right thing to do. It stops you. You know, it's your conscience. That is actually coming from your spirit guides, past life masters and teachers from other realms, uh, angels, uh, maybe our relatives who passed away, also our children, you know, and our parents who passed away, our friends. So it could come from anywhere. It really, whether you are to follow the messages that you're getting or not depends actually on your own vibration. So I don't trust all the messages that I get. I look at the vibration of the message, you know, the feeling of the message, and then I decide whether I want to trust it or not. So messages, what I understand is not necessarily it are those eureka moments. It could be small, small things even in your daily life. Like today, if I have to make a decision, and if I stop the clutter in my mind and connect to a being, I could get a message which helps me to make that decision. Yes. The decision is going to be yours, but you can get some clarity. 
because when you, uh, so a voice in your head or you know uh, uh, or a feeling or something is pushing you to and telling you do this then that is clearly not from a you know high vibrate being high vibration being because they will never make the decision for you they will always tell you you know if, if you do this this could happen or if you do that that could happen that the choice is always yours they never make decisions for you right so basically they guide you yeah they give you guidance hmm, that's very interesting so tell me what are clear channels because what i've heard very really often is that the means of receiving these messages are not the physical messages in terms of feathers and numbers but you know when we receive messages in our being that is known as clair yes so and that's why the clairvoyancy comes that terminology so what does that mean so uh you must have heard a lot of you know in the layman language people sometimes say oh she has a black you know dark tongue whatever she says comes true uh some people have this uh, thing that you know oh this has happened i have already seen this before this is a very layman way of telling people that see all this is nothing but uh, you know your clair is in action <laughs> uh the, so there are different kinds of clairs there is like uh, people have multiple abilities depending on how clear their body is but also there are different degrees of the same clair like uh, some people can see things like oh it could be things uh, like you know if i see somebody Uh, and there is a spirit over there i will be able to sense the spirit and sometimes also see the spirit right some people can sense the spirit some people can see the spirit and some people just start feeling what the spirit is feeling you know and not just spirit but even if you take ancestral jewelry you know you hold it in your hand and some people can just touch things and uh tap into the memory of anything connected to that thing or some people can just go into one space and tell you everything that has happened there before you know uh so you can see things from through your third eye you can smell things and smell also like for example uh sometimes when uh, there is channeling happening like right? you know someone if somebody just pops up when i'm talking to someone and i suddenly start smelling roses or you know i would start smelling a fruit or something and then i always bring it up who is do you, i mean you know and then they always connected to that person i describe the you know whatever it depends it comes differently every time but if you bring it up it actually makes sense to the person you're talking to and sometimes like uh i have told this many times but uh, when i'm talking to someone who is diabetic or whose family whose parents are diabetic my tongue just turns bitter you know so i know that this person has either got diabetes or may get diabetes in the future because then we work on the beliefs connected to that right and then uh, like when you know when we were kids and we had a cut our parents would always start tell us put your you know finger in your mouth and so we tasted blood so then i get that taste of blood when i taste blood i know there is a blood related problem so the taste uh, like i'm able to taste things uh, then again there's clear audience you hear things right but when you hear it's not hearing like physical hearing a lot of people can physically hear but like how you hear we can hear each other right now but gen- generally it starts with like these silent whispers in your mind where you think they are your your own thoughts right and uh, there are many many clairs you know there are many different kinds of abilities but these are the general ones you know clair audience clear sentient uh and clear cognition you know you some people just know things and they don't know how they know it but they just know 
So like, do that. Like yeah. least, sometimes when I meet a person, I just know something about that person. Yes, yes. Person. So yeah. For me, so I that... don't see or hear. Either I know or I sense it in my body, in my physical body. I sense it. That's clear sentience. Because when you start, uh, you know, whatever is happening in that person's body is happening in your body. That is clear sentience. So there are many different layers, but again, there are degrees in them, you know. So the more you develop it, the more they will become stronger. So a person can have one dominant clay and other clays in some lesser degrees. But each person has one dominant clay. Yeah, generally, every person does have one or two dominant players, but they don't know how to recognize it, you know. So it is very important if you want to become awake and aware, it's very important if you want to, you know, use it. You know, having uh, most of the people uh, think it's a taboo thing talking about all these things, but they have it in them. But it's like, you know, they are sitting on a treasure. It's like a man who's uh, who's sitting on a land which has treasure inside, but they are living in a hut without food, without clothes. Most of the people on earth are living like that. You just dig the damn ground and, you know, find the treasure and live like the king. So I think, you know, everybody should... Uh, focus on at least discovering a little bit of their ability because that will make not just their spiritual life but also their physical life much easier. Yeah, I think one thing I would like to put it out here based on our experience is that knowing your clairs and getting messages is not being about spiritual. It doesn't mean that you have to leave your physical life and get into spirituality 100%. Like Nilu mentioned, yeah. you can actually develop your clear ability, basically clear your clear channel so that you can get messages and use that very effectively in your day-to-day -day life. Like I have sometimes used the guidance of masters from the other side to make business decisions. Sometimes even to make decisions about my children or my homely life. And they have worked brilliantly. And like she said, the choice is ours. They give us guidance. So if you're confused about something, you can tap into your clear channel, ask for guidance, get the guidance, and then decide what is to be done. Yeah. So I think that's a very important point that you've mentioned, that it doesn't mean moving away from your physical life into spirituality. And I think the other thing is that spirituality doesn't mean leaving your physical life and going off to the Himalayas or to a cave. Spirituality, you could be very rooted in your physical life do a 12-hour, 14-hour job and yet be spiritual because spiritual is basically about being zen, about being in touch with your emotions. Yes. I think people, when they get into spirituality, again, I'm not talking about religion, religion. I'm talking about spirituality, which is just going within them. They also find a way to, you know, solve the mundane problems like, solving their financial problems, solving their uh, health problems. But people just wait till it gets to the neck, you know. And then when they're in the desperate energy, no matter how much they try, because you need to be in a very calm and composed state to be able to uh, explore these uh, abilities. So... Well, that's very true. So tell me, Nilu, can you take us through a small process where which can help people our listeners who are watching this to understand their clairs or which is their dominant clair. Yeah, sure. I let's do this small exercise. So this was the exercise that my spirit guide Serena had taught me, which is also um, one of the exercises we do in the course that we teach, right? A workshop. So uh, just close your eyes. We'll do a very quick one. Okay. Take a few deep breaths. Just calm yourself down and bring your attention inside your body. This is like 
something like what Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, you know, the tortoise just pulls his head and he's like into the shell. So that's exactly what we have to do. Now I want you to focus on the right toe of your foot. Right foot, toe. Focus on the skin on the toe of the right foot. And Observe what you're feeling, seeing, sensing, hearing, smelling, tasting. Just observe what is happening to you when you're focusing on the skin. Now bring your attention to the nail in your toe. And now to the bone in your toe. Now to all the nerves in your toe. And feel the blood gushing in and moving in all the nerves in your body. And the flesh in your body. Okay. When you're ready to open your eyes, just open. So now you have to sit down and think about what happened when you did this exercise. Were you able to see, visualize the whole thing? Or were you able to feel it? Or were you able to sense it? The difference between feeling and sensing is that you're just sensing it. You know, feeling is when you literally can feel the movement of the blood. You know, you can feel, just feel the movement and feel the skin and feel the bones and feel everything. Or did you taste it? Did you smell something? Or did you just see something? Did you hear something? So this exercise is one of the exercises which can actually uh, tell you which is the dominant uh, psychic sense in, that is active in you. And uh, as you keep uh, kind of practicing different meditations and things like that, the one, the senses that are not dominant in you will also start becoming dominant. You know, they will start becoming stronger and stronger. And then instead of just, you know, seeing it or feeling it, you will be doing all at the same time. Yeah, that's something I totally agree because I can, so from sensing and feeling things, I can see now that sometimes as a meditation practice deepens, I can, so my sense of taste and my sense of smell was really not there. But now I have started at times smelling or tasting certain things which are not food related. So, <laughs> so I totally vouch for that. But thank you so much for this, Neelu, because I think this is something that's going to help a lot of people, especially identify their clairs. And I would really recommend to everybody who's watching this, please do this activity. And you can do it multiple times. You can go to that part of the video and do it again and again till you identify what works for you, what is your dominant clair. And then see if you can use that with daily practice to start receiving guidance. And do share with us how your life changes after that. 
And if someone wants to get deeper into this work, connect with us because uh, we are planning a workshop in the coming months, which will be all about how to uh, deepen your clairvoyancy, how to get messages, how to scan people around you, how to look at auras, identify auras, a combination of all of that. So whoever is interested, do messages so that we keep you updated as and when we come up with the workshop. Thank you so much, Nidhi. Thank you so much, Deepthi. God bless you all. Thank you.